Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at Power Automate for Desktop Data Loss Prevention Policies. So yes, you heard me. Now we can go and apply those same DLP policies that we do on Power Platform Admin Center. We can go and make sure they apply for your desktop flows as well. And this truly was a big ask, but now the feature is available. So I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. First, I'll go through the requirements of what is needed. Second, the configuration, and then finally, we'll do a test. So stick around, this is very important from a security standpoint. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. First, let's look at the requirements, and the best place to get the correct information is looking at the Microsoft Learning documentation. So here we are, I'm looking at this documentation about setting the policy for the DLPs. The article was actually posted on August of 23rd, 2023, so that's just four days ago. Um, but when I scroll down, the first thing that caught my attention was for the DLP policies for desktop flows, important. And two items over there. First of all, is that enforcement of DLP policies is available for managed environments only. This is a big one, all right? You need to know this. It's not for all kinds of environments. It's only for managed environments. So that was a big one. Second one is in order for this policy, which is on the cloud, for it to take effect on your desktop flows, your desktop app needs to be available for version of this one, the 2.14.173, um, that or a newer one. It says later, later also means newer. So minimum requirement is this version, but anything newer than that works as well. So now that we know what the two requirements are, let's go and do the configuration where we actually apply these requirements. So let's switch gears and now look at the configuration. Now we know what those two requirements are, but we'll get to that in just a few minutes because there's one configuration we have to do as a Power Platform Admin. So, as you understood, Power Platform Admin role is needed by a user who's gonna go and make these changes. So I'm here in my Power Automate, you can be in your Power Apps as well. Either way, go on the top right and click on the settings, and in the settings, go and click on Admin Center. When you're in the Admin Center, once it goes ahead and does the full loading, on the left side, click on Settings. Go right at the bottom and there you go. It says something called desktop flow actions in DLP. See that there is actually this little icon over here. This icon basically says that this settings apply to managed environments only. So by doing this, we even comply by that first requirement that this can only be done by managed environments. So I'm gonna click on this. On the right side, the settings actually comes in and over here it says when enabled desktop flow action groups will be visible when creating or editing policies. But I, by default, it is toggled off or disabled. I'm going to go ahead and toggle it on. I'll go to the bottom, I'll click on save. And now we have complied by this setting. And on the top, it even says your settings have been successful. So that's good. We went and now got this setting one done. Next, we got to start complying with those two rules. First of all, I need to have a managed environment. So if you don't already have something, go ahead and create one of those because that's the only place this will work. And just to show you what I have, I have an environment. It is called Managed Solutions. It is of a type production. It is ready, which means all the build of the environment is done. I have Dataverse in it, but here's the key one. It is managed. That managed section has to be yes. This is absolutely imperative as a requirement. Otherwise, that DLP policy for the Power Automate for desktop flows will not work. So we went and now complied by that first requirement that we just read. Second thing is now to make sure that a Power Automate for desktop version is at least minimum of the requirement that we saw. So if I go back again here to the toggle screen, I say this was the version 2.14.173.21294. So let's go ahead and now open up our Power Automate for desktop. So I'm gonna just search for Power Automate app. I'm gonna go and click on that one. That's gonna go and open up my Power Automate for desktop. It's completely filling up my screen, signing it in. And now I have access to this specific environment on Power Automate for desktop. What I do need to confirm is what is my version over here. So on the top right, if I click on this help and if I click on about, it gives me this information that my version is 2.33. But just to be sure, if I go ahead and now take a look, this says that the desktop flow is available for version of 2.14 or later. Well, I'm already in good shape because I'm on 2.33, this is 2.14, so I think I should be in good shape over here. But if you're not sure, and if you go and see this 2.14, uh, or anything less than that, I'll go ahead and update it. I'm good because I'm already at 2.33, right? So I'm gonna click on close. 
What I want to do is I want to now go ahead and test it in my other environment. So I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to go to my manage solutions environment. All right. Uh, in my environment over here, I can go ahead and I'll create my flows. So I'm all in good shape and my DLP should also apply over here. Uh, if you're curious, by the way, I'm going with the Azure Pay as you go subscription. So that's the only reason I see this. If you don't see it this way, you might already have your licensing taken care of. So don't be alarmed if you do not see that. So the last configuration item that is left is now actually applying the policy. So for that, we got to switch gears and again, go back into the browser side from the Power Platform Admin Center. Uh, and initially, we were in the settings area over here. I just got to go ahead and now click on the policies. And in my data policies, I'm either going to edit an existing one that you have or for my example, I'm going to go and create a new one. You just decide how you want because it could be either or. You are also creating a new one or you are just editing an existing one. For the sake of this example, I'm going to create an existing one. So I'm going to call this as a the DLP live demo. I'm going to go and click on next. And over here, what immediately caught my attention was this number. Uh, I just saw that the number after we went and turned on that setting went up to 1096. That number really jumped. So a best way to now find these new policies is if you go in this class column, click on the drop down. Now you see there's also the desktop flow. So when you click on it and click on apply, now you go and see all of these, which is great. And there are a ton. And as you and I know, Microsoft is always making improvements to their processes, which means this list will definitely grow. But for the sake of this demo, I'm going to take a very specific one and I'm going to go ahead and block it. So the one that I actually want to go and try is this clipboard. What the clipboard basically means is that there is an action in my desktop and flow where I want to take something and I want to save it to the clipboard. We will, we will first go and take this thing. I will, this uh, action, I will go and block it. So you can see it has moved to the block. I can verify that. So I'll intentionally go and block it. After that, I'm going to go and click on next. I'll let it all finish through. I'm only going to add that to specific environments. So when I go and click on next, add this policy, which is the existing available ones. I'm only going to go and add that to the managed one. So I'll go ahead and add that to the managed policy and I'll go and click on next. I'll go and click on create. And when I said I meant managed environment, not managed policy. Uh, so there you go. The new policy that we created, the DLP live demo one, uh, it applied to managed solutions. That's the name of the environment. And the policy is now successful, which means it applies immediately. All right. So now we got to go and test it. So I'm going to now open up my power automate for desktop once again, verifying that I'm in the correct environment because that's only what works over here. Um, I'll go and click on new. And when I go and click on new, we are now going to go ahead and do flow name. I'll go and click on create. And it is showing me that I'm in the process of editing it. A new page opens up, a new screen. And now we're going to go into the actual designing studio piece of it. Now, remember, what is the action that we blocked in the policy? It is for the clipboards. So on the top left, when you go on actions, I just search for clipboard and there's a bunch of them. So I'm going to go and just grab the first action that I see. I'll just click on it, select it, drag it, drop it, and I put it over here. Now it is giving me some properties that I can go and do, which is great. I'll click on save, but keep in mind that your DLP policy hasn't automatically applied yet because we are still making it. We're working on the flow. But now if I go and click on save, now we are going ahead and actually putting it in and this message comes up and it is a great message because our DLP policy directly went and applied over there. And it is basically saying that your flow has been saved successfully. However, it violates one or more DLP policies set by organization, resolve or remove or disable any of those points. And it's basically even telling me what is the flow one. So if I go and click on close, um, and if I go and X out of this one, what I see is that yes, I did not lose my desktop flow, but it is suspended. I've got this little me message over here. And if I click on it, it's telling me the same thing that the policy has been blocking. There's a policy that blocks it. So this is all great. Remember the huge thing that is happening, the policy is setting up on the cloud, but over here, even on the desktop side, as long as you have the right version, the policy directly applies to it. So this is neat. Now, just as a final test, if I go back up to my cloud, okay, I go back over here to my Power Platform admin setting, I'll go and take a look at this policy. Uh, let's just say I go and delete it, all right? I just completely go and delete it. Um, now, I don't have that policy applied anymore. So if I go outside again, and now if I go ahead and say, I'm going to go and edit this one. Now, when I go and edit it, the window comes up again. It'll show me any of the work that I've done because it's getting things ready. Basically, we only have that one action. So the action is over here. Now, if I say, just go ahead and open this up just to verify everything is good. I'll just go and click on save. I, I don't really have to do this. I'm just showing you as if I did something. Um, now I go and click on save. 
Now when I save it, you see, <clears throat> you didn't get that message. This was a nice message over here. And so if I just go and X out of this as well, you see it's no longer suspended and I'm not getting any of that warning message over there and the flow is ready for you to run. Key, key points over here is that DLP policy, again, which is on the cloud and you're doing this on the desktop, that just blows my mind, takes effect instantly and you don't have to wait, you don't have to reboot, nothing. It is that fast. So in closing, there are a few other points in this documentation that I want you to be aware of. This is the section that we just saw, but if you scroll down, you will actually get a list of all of the existing flow modules available specifically for the DLP. And this list over here is always growing. For example, we just went and took a look at the clipboard one, but there are other ones available over here as well, always growing. And finally, you have some options to go ahead and run this through a PowerShell support as well, in case that is something that you prefer, doing it from a PowerShell standpoint, you have this available as well. Just keep in mind that if you don't want to turn on the show desktop actions in DLP policy setting, you can use the following PowerShell script to add to all desktop flows to the block group in your DLP policy. Just thought that you should be aware of this as well. So in conclusion, the things I want to point out is that even though this applies only for managed solutions, that doesn't mean that you will have to rebuild any of your Power Automate for desktop flows because turning your existing unmanaged environment into a managed environment is literally just one click. You can go ahead and do all of that that fast. And then after that, go to your settings and go to your turn on the entire DLP policy and then go and set them just the way I walk you through it. So there's not a whole lot of work involved to go and start applying this. Just plan ahead of time all the things that you require. So hopefully this video was useful to you. And as always, keep using Power Automate for desktop flows. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.